a start it has been to the restart of the AIA Singapore Premier League. 12 goals over four games this past weekend. And the big one that we all looked forward to was the game at our Tampines Hub between Tampines Rovers and Haugang United. And it's apt that I have Haugang United representation on the show today. Fidel Kasim, the assistant coach, part also of the head of youth yep. with the Cheetahs. And Emmerich Ong, new signing, has returned to Haugang Stadium after nine years. And we will get into that match very, very shortly. But first, Fidel, seven long months waiting for the restart. How good did it feel to be back in competitive action? Yeah, of course, I think everybody is looking forward to the game. Um, it was quite uncertain in the past, so to finally get a one-week notice to prepare for the game was a bit difficult for the technical team. But you can see over the weekend how prepared were the boys and how eager were they to get the game going. So yeah, it's, been, it's been nice eh, to finally kick off the long-awaited season. Emmerich, we were waiting for you to get on the pitch as well, but you were missing in action. Are you okay? Is there any injuries? Why, why didn't we not see you on the pitch? Uh, no, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm fine. So I think that uh, maybe I'm not fully 100% fit yet. So I think that it's, I'm not rushing to come back into action. And I think that the technical staff also know that. So I think they're not rushing me back. So I don't want to be, have a reoccurrence of the injury. Yeah. So um, I always want the best for the team. So whoever is ready should, should be the one playing. Viewers of the AIA Singapore Premier League will recognise Emmerich Ong as he featured in the last match before we took the COVID break as a pundit for the match between Tanjong Paga United and Albrex Negata. How have you made that shift from, I know you have your, your outside uh, ventures as well, but how have you made that shift to professional football once again? Um, I think at that, at that point, uh, I was still uh, in my rehab phase. So I think I got invited on, and on as a pundit by you. So I think that it's, it's good to be involved even though I'm not playing. So looking at my, all my previous teammates, my ex-teammates playing, and it's, it's nice to, to commentate on them and also to, to be finally involved in local football again. So I think ever since then, uh, I've stepped up my rehab and of course, also I've got to train with Haugang United and of course, eventually sign for them now. So I'm, I'm glad to be back. Well, we are glad to have him back and we are glad to have you back on the SPL show. And of course, to make this all happen, to make the set look real spiffy, we have to thank 42. So for all your home decor and furniture and lifestyle needs, go to 42.sg. Here you go. F-O-R-T-Y-T-W-O dot S-G. All right, so as mentioned, the big one was at our Tampines Hub, Tampines Rovers League Leaders taking on Haugang United. It was much awaited because both these teams did qualify for the AFC Cup last season. So the quality was expected and we did see fireworks on the pitch. AIA Singapore Premier League theme song, Game On. You can see on the screen there, we await the delivery in Swinger from Sahil Suhaimi. Go straight for goal! And gets the opening goal. What a strike from Sahil Suhaimi. That is genius from the set piece. And Haugang United go 1-0 up after 15 minutes. Cross view ball, looking for Nasrul. Run off the defenders, no foul. There's an opportunity for Haugang United to make it two. And they do. We have a shocking store here at our Tampanese hub. As Haugang United go 2-0 up. Inside 18 minutes. It's a good first touch. And is he onside here? Mohaimin, he is. He's looking for support. Mohaimin, as a free man in the middle to make it 3-0. They're asking for the penalty, but what a chance wasted by Haugang United. Dinks ball in, looking for the equalizer, uh, for the goal back, and they have it. They pull the goal back. And they're racing back. And they have half an hour to find the equalizer. Nakamura to Madu. A little bit too much pace on them. Madu gets ahead. And the equalizer comes. Oh, the flag has gone up. Flag has gone up. Shawal. Trying to squeeze it past to Shafiq Ghani. Shafiq is offside. Flag is up. Madu. Left foot cross in, looking for Bennett. Ooh. It was Bahaki Kaizan, in fact, at the back post. Bahaki in centre forward roll. 
Nakamura. Kyoga Nakamura! Off the bar! Taufik oh. Supano can't convert. We're into time added on, in time added on. Deep ball coming in, Riduan by Rudin, doesn't claim. Shaul Anua gets the ball away. And that's it! A big victory here for Haokang United at OTH. Tampines Rovers, the league leaders, have been beaten. Final score, it is Tampines Rovers 1, Haokang United 2. Yeah, Fidao's big effort from the boys in that victory. Shocking the league leaders. How impressed were you with the work rate after seven months of no competitive football? You see, Duncan, um, we've been working on this uh, defensive block for over a week now, over a week and a half. I think um, we look at, we considered many, many factors. I think the past two seasons, Haugang considered 90 goals in two seasons, which was about average about 45 goals. So we thought that maybe after the first three months of the seasons, we considered more than 10 goals in few matches. So we have to correct some things, you know. Of course, um, eventually we want to play an attacking style of game, very intensive game. But uh, we have to fix things like the back first. So I think uh, the goal that Irwan Shah, I think Emmerich can testify, it was the first goal we considered in, uh, since one and a half weeks ago. So even in training, the boys were so solid defensively. So it wasn't a surprise at all that we we were able to resist all the pressure. I felt that, yes, Tampines had the ball, but we were in control of the game. We were controlling the spaces, we were covering the gaps. We didn't allow them to get into positions where they want to score. So in the end, um, okay, lapse of concentration, I think we can defend the, the goal better, but I, I thought it was, um, we were absolutely in control of the game. We knew what to do with the ball. We knew we know what to do without the ball. So um, it's, um, of course, winning is a bonus, yeah? So yeah. I hope that we can take this forward uh, and build momentum on this. Yeah, we were left scratching our heads at the start of the match because we couldn't figure out which position, uh, which player was playing because it did seem there were three centre-backs on the pitch. And, you know, usually we don't see Haugang United playing uh, with three at the back, it's usually the four, and then very attackingly. But you, you made good use of, of your, of your wing-backs during the match as well. Uh, how much did you suffer at the end of the match? Were, were, were the players hanging on at, at, at that point? No, actually, when we, we look back at all the, the GPS data, they were, they were very, very fit. Of course, now for 45 minutes, uh, I took him off, or we took him off. Uh, not because he, he wasn't playing well, he was brilliant. I thought in the first half, work that was fantastic. But uh, first game in two years after he's Nessa Silva, so of course, he's going to take uh, a toll on him. But I, th I thought Mohaimin, Farhan, uh, the centre midfields, Anumantan, everybody put in a lot of shifts, so it was fantastic. It's an overall team performance. Eh? You speak about Nafal and, yeah. and what an introduction uh, he has to, yeah. to the team so far because the second goal was part of his movement, yeah. right? He, he brought the defender one way and then yeah. made the run in and then set up the goal for Farhan, so you must be pleased with that. And you were watching from home. <laughs> what was it like watching, watching your, your team play from home and cheering them on? Watching the team... Uh, execute what the technical staff has, has taught us to do. I think it's, it was pleasing for me to watch. Uh, now I know how the technical uh, staff will feel when they see something and it works according to plan. So I think especially for the second goal when Naufal made that run into the box, I think that was what um, he was told to do. So I mean, for him, for Farhan, uh, the instructions were for them to make the runs in. So I mean, for, for him to really do that in the game and it resulted in the goal, I think it was... Uh, very satisfactory. Actually, it was uh, sorry. Actually, it was three. The first three chance, chances we yeah, created. The, the, the first chances Nafal had that yeah. was off the training ground, yeah. and the goal that we scored in the second one it was also straight yeah. from the training ground. So I, all three. I can tell the pride of, of seeing things that being worked on the training ground yeah. uh, being put onto onto the pitch as well. Because I know coaches go crazy with players when when you yeah. do stuff on the training ground, but it doesn't translate onto the pitch. We spoke uh, before we went on air and you said you had a feeling that Sahil would go for goal. Uh, yeah. Did you have a gut feeling or, or has he been doing that in training? Um, I, think, I think I've known Sahil for many years and I think that he always has that uh, cheekiness in him, in his game. So I, I've, I, I had that inside feeling in me when he was lining up that free kick that he would go directly for goal and he really did. And we, we haven't even spoken about the, the departure of Stipe Plaza, but it is a blow for, for Haugang United. But... Have you needed, uh, needed to change the way you go forward now with, without that focal uh, point up front? Actually, Duncan, um, if you look at 
Haugang compared from last season. Uh, we lost four of our top five scorers, actually. So it's, that's about 30 over goals, 30, 33 goals, actually, we lost. So we have to find ways to replace them. So with the limitation of the under-23 rulings, of course, it's, it's difficult to fill your best players. So we have to make do. So with whatever we got, we have to be creative with it. So sometimes if we need to play on a counter-attack, sometimes we need to play um, attacking football to dominate the ball, sometimes to sit deep. So at the moment now, we're just trying to build, to instill the winning mentality in the boys. So for us, compared to, let's say, for example, Tampines or Lions, uh, Lions City Sailors, they've been winning over the years. So for them now, it's about winning with style. They need to have a, a, an identity, a style of play. For Haugang at the moment now, yes, they finished third in last season, but they, in the past, they haven't really been, in, been winning a lot. So uh, we want to try to create the winning mentality first. At the same time, uh, we need to have a balance also to, to slowly inculcate or introduce or implement the style of play that we want to play. So, yeah, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's pleasing yeah? when you go up against a big boys and get a result like this. It's a big, big uh, statement, I think, to the rest of the teams. Is it a statement? You, you, you beat the, the league leaders at their own home ground. Does this show that, that Haugang United mean business? And, you know, you're not just looking for AFC Cup qualification anymore. You want to try and win the league and get AFC Champions League. Yeah, I think you can see from the league table this season that the league is quite, it's quite open. I mean, there's, there's no team that is invincible or anyone that is, uh, we, are, we are afraid of. So I think there's also a step before the game that Tampines has launched us one game in the last 19 at, at uh, OTH. Yeah. So I think with us going there to beat them, I think, like Fidel said, it really sent a big statement to the rest of the league that um, we can beat anyone on our day and um, with the way we are playing. And I think we can adapt to different formations and changes and different situations in the game. So I think that uh, we will we'll, we'll not be, af be afraid of anyone. Well, that was a massive victory for Haugang United at OTH against Tempest Rovers, the defending cup champions, of course. But there was also another game on Saturday at Jurong East Stadium as Tanjung Paga United hosted Ballester Khalsa. It was always going to be a tight game and just the one goal separated the two sides. Lots of safe distance and safety protocols in place here for the restart to ensure that we can enjoy our football under the safest possible conditions. So two early goals there and the current league leaders, Tempanese Rovers, in all kinds of trouble early. Oh, there's going to spin dangerously. There was that handball as well. Referee gives the free kick the other way. I'd like to see the replay on that. Let's have a look at this. Now watch Ensa and Yamata. Well... Referee's got that spot on. Ballester Kalsas, best mini spell of the first opening half an hour. Krychek to the byline. Krychek with a cross. Heads up, Oshino, and it's wide. And it's a difficult cross. It was over Yamata, and that's a mismatch height-wise between Tanaka and Hoshino. That's a promising cross-field bomb by Elijah Lim, and it's found its target over on that far side. Trying to release Hoshino! Oh, best shot for the half. Bang on half-time. And Hoshino's just put it over the bar. Corner comes in, keeper's not got there, and it's the big ball, Bruno! Poor defending from Tang John Bagar United, and Saar Brunsevic has scored the most simple of headed goals of a corner to give Ballester Kalsa the lead. And I'm afraid Yamata's yeah, lost him there. So Zul Kifli, now might be a great chance to repay the faith. Shown. That's going to cross everyone. Could be 1 1. And just getting there is Zyfel. Ball comes in. Sarah Prakeshwar, he's not missed a sitter there, but if he'd have got any kind of contact the in that goal, it would have been 1 1. Tanaka looks up for an option. Tanaka, that's a good ball through. Headed wide by Ignatius Ang. You know, that's a lovely turn by Zuzu. And he's put Hazwan Halim away at the races. Hazwan Halim into the area. Looks for the square ball. And a beautiful saving tackle from Takahiro Tanaka. Only as far as Zuzu. Zuzu twisting and turning. Gets the shot away. And it's high wide and not so handsome. Cheers, Ignatius Ang. Oh, he scuffed that. But it's gone through all of them. And how's he missed? Face with an open goal on the edge of the six-yard box. Will they get a better opportunity than this? It wasn't a great free kick by Ignatius Ang. Soraya dancing into the area. Manages to get to the byline. Soraya, can he deliver the cross or find for it? Gets the cross in spectacular effort and some save. And that would have been the fairy tale debut for Zul Kifli. Sapara Prakash did well. And that was a really good bit of improvisation from Zul Kifli. Tanjong Bagar with their sixth corner. 
Keepers missed this one. And Jan Mott has missed it as well. Chances for Ignatius Ang and Sarah Prakash both should have been scored. And Fareed Sami with another opportunity. You can't really complain that you should have got something from it. Another great cross from Takahiro Tanaka. Tanja Magala, their own worst enemies. Ballista Kelsa goes second in the AIA Singapore Premier League tonight after 211 days of waiting. The wait's worthwhile for the Tigers. It's finished here. Tangjong Bagar United nil. Ballester Kelsa won. Yeah, they were hanging on a little bit at the end there. Ballester Kelsa, Fidos. Uh, should Tanjung Bagar United have got at least a point out of that one? Yeah, I, I, I thought that uh, they had plenty of chances, but um, yeah, this is football. Eh? If you don't convey on chances, then uh, it, it's difficult. Yeah? How difficult is it to mark Ensa Brunsevich? Now three goals this season, all very similar, balls into the area and he uses his height to, to score. So it's going to be difficult to, to man-mark him as, as he got off Jan Mota mm -hmm. in that set-piece situation. Yeah, I think as a defender myself, I think coming up against a, a very big player, I mean, um, if, he, if he gets a spin around and turn, it's difficult to follow his movement. So I think it's good movement from him there to move away from his marker. So uh, credit to him. Yeah, they're missing the, the top striker, Lewis Jr. I think he only had a couple of minutes mm. in that match. Once he's fully fit, you do feel like he will get into the right positions and he will get the goals for, for Tanjung Yeah, of course. Uh, I think I watched them uh, play uh, against uh, Tan uh, Tampines. I, I thought in counter-attack, he's, um, he's one player who holds up the ball very well to allow others to get into position to play counter-attack. So definitely, I think for them, uh, to not be playing from the start, it's a big loss for Tanyu Paga. Yeah. So you can see already in the last few minutes that he came on, tried to change the game. Hasrin Jailani, of course, now the head coach of Tanjung Paga United, a, a man you know very, very well. Yes. Uh, happy to see him in charge of, of a team once again. And, you know, to be honest, I think they did react really well, Tanjung Paga United, because it was just days before the restart where mm. we got news that Hairi Suap uh, resigned from his post to, yeah. you know, pursue different ventures. Hasrin has come in and, and they, they played well. Yeah, I mean, I think Hasrin is, is no stranger to local football. So I think um, he has always been involved in the, in the, at Tanubaga. So I think it's natural for him to take over. So I think the boys at Tanubaga really know what to expect from him. So I think he has, I think he has got that mentality instilled in them, that fighting spirit in them. So you can see that through the final whistle, they've been carving out chances after chances. So they, they don't give up easily. Can Ballester be a surprise package this, this season? They have Hoshino up front. Shime Zuzu, Christian Krychek, uh, Hazwan Halim is part of the squad as well. Can they be a surprise package? How well can they, can they, can they do this season? I think compared to seasons before, um, Ballester has more options now in attack. Uh, and you can see already now from set pieces also how dangerous they can be. So they can mix it up. So I think it's not easy these days to expect from Ballester actually. So I think we really need to prepare very well against Ballester. Yeah, so that was the action on Saturday. Sunday, the big one by far was at the Bishan Stadium. Lions City Sailors, big spenders up against Geylang International who started the weekend in second position. And Lions City Sailors giving a second debut, if you like, to Stipe Plazibat. And he had an impact on the match. We're almost set for action. I hope you're enjoying wherever you're watching live in the world. We're just noticing we had some fist bumps yesterday. Don't appear to be any fist bumps today. I don't think that's an unfriendly thing. Former Tampanese man Shardam with the corner. Delivered deep. Heads are up. And getting ahead to it was to Jenny. And my word, that is not a piece of goalkeeping that Zainer will look back on fondly. And inside eight minutes, the Sailors get the dream, dream start. But my word, how on earth has that got past Zainer? Matipe Pazina got the final touch. It looked innocuous from Tajeli initially, but the defending not there. Van Heusen's delivered a decent ball in the middle as well. And there's a chance for the equaliser, and he's put it over. Oh, my word. Will Galen get a better opportunity than that? We've already had a dream start. So that was Lukman with a great chance. Every time they come forward, though, they say as they look in business. Deepay Blas about for two. Some save Zidal. Lovely running off the ball from Stipe Plus about help create the chance. The flag stayed down. They're queuing up the Galang players in the box. Van Heusen dancing into the area. Decent cross. Can they finish? Off the line. Great move from Galang International. The best passenger player in the match so far by either side. And the Lion City Sailors coming up trumps defensively. And was that Tajeli again? What an influence he's having. They've got numbers up and support arriving fast with Stipe Plus about. And that's a delightful ball through the middle. Hafiz Noor this time beats the keeper. Can't finish it off. Well, that was...
is sensational from Lion City Sailors on the counter. Still very much game on at Bishan, and that's what we are now. Game on back in the SPL. Arshad, side all. They want the penalty, and they're going to get it right on half time. Yeah, that's a that's a nasty tackle. Yeah, red Patrick, card. That's a nasty tackle. And a Look penalty. Yeah, on that angle, it looks atrocious. Kaling with a mountain to climb. Zainal sees red. Hyrule comes on. Oh, and he very nearly celebrated a save. Gets the wrong way, but Song's power too much for him. And right on half time with the last kick of the first half. And what a dramatic end to the first half it is. For East Farhan, what's his delivery like? It's decent, and the header comes in. What a save, Hassan Sonny. Well, you called it, Philippe the best delivered corner they'd had in the game so far. And it's produced a world-class save from Hassan Sonny. You know, I'd love to see what they're going to be made of when the chips are down. That's the right. chips haven't been down for them yet. Here's a chance for a third. The flag stays down. Surely this time, Stipe Plazabat makes it three. Flag stays down. Seven for the season for Plazabat. But it looks offside from that angle, doesn't it? Net result is its game set match now for the Lion City Sailors. They're like the good, the bad, and the ugly, Gay Lang. Ugly when they come to some of their fouls that pick up red cards. Good when they're in flea throwing form like they were against Haugang. And bad, well, I think. You've alluded to the defending, that might fit that book. Are we going to get 4 0 Lion City Sailors? Yes, we are. The flag stays down and it's four. Great names of Singapore striking. Sharon Ishak's come off the bench. He won't score an easier goal all season, but he scored a goal and now it's four. Yes, he will. So, after that false alarm, the Lion City Sailors pick up their first ever win. You have to say the Lion City Sailors, notwithstanding the red card to Zainal just before half time, deserved winners here tonight. Yeah, big win for the Sailors. American did a red card, just changed the game because Geelang International were in it at 1-0, but the penalty and the red card to Zaino Gulam, that, that just was game over for them from yeah. that point onwards. I think, I think before that, that red card, uh, I think they had a good chance where Van Huizen crossed the ball for... Uh, I don't know who was that. So I think at 1-0 at and with 11 men on the pitch, I think Geelang had, well, have, had a good chance. So I think that red card and penalty changed the whole game. Was the red card, uh, the red card a fair one, uh, in your opinion? I think that uh, the challenge was a little high. It was close to the knee. So I think yeah, it, was, it was probably deserved. And for the Lion City Sailors, for Vidmar, has he got them to gel from, from what you've seen? Because there was a question mark. You know, he's come in as a, a, fr as a fresh coach in the Singapore mm -hmm. Premier League. Got a bunch of good players together, but it was about getting them to play as a team. And from, from that viewing, maybe good signs of that happening? Yeah, perhaps, but uh, you can only, I think, judge uh, when they've played uh, three, four games in a row then. It's because I think, um, you know, maybe whatever momentum they tried to build over in the past, uh, seven months break, again, you have to restart all over again. So I think we will know more in a uh, couple of weeks' time. Plus, he's on the score sheet, two for them. What does he bring to the side uh, when, when you worked with him and having analysed his game? What does he bring as an attacking force? I think first and foremost, he's, uh, as a person, he's a fantastic guy. Um, and I mean, as a player, uh, I love working with him. We had a very honest conversation. I think last season he was playing mostly on the right. So we spoke a lot in pre-season how to get him more uh, dangerous up front. So um, I think he brings others into the play through his link-up uh, game. Uh, making runs and I think uh, most important is he's in the box there to finish He's a very good finisher so you can see I think his goal record speaks volumes of uh, his uh, ability do you expect the sailors to go on a run now and, and, and kick, kick on from from victory here because her expectations are really really high on yeah. them talk about pressure they've pumped money in and they expect AFC Champions League don't they yeah I hope not but um, <laughs> uh, I think they have quality in the sides to to, to start winning matches a uh, few matches in a row now but uh, I think uh, you can see already from past few games of results that uh, every team is capable of taking points off each other. So I think it won't be easy for any team. Else. So Sailors will have uh, face a lot of challenge from other teams. Second big defeat of the season for, for Gela International. They did have that opening uh, defeat against Alberex Nigata. Uh, I wouldn't say that perhaps um, you know, they need to, to kind of like keep their temper in check, but they, they've racked up the red cards in the first uh, few matches for them. Do you expect them to bounce back? They had so many options off the bench. They had Faris Fahan, they had Iqbal, uh, they had Kairun Nizam as mm -hmm. well. So do you expect Noali to, to, to shuffle things around? Um, I, I, think, I think they will surely bounce back. I mean, looking at the bench, like we said, they mentioned, um, they have a very strong local bench. So I think that 
um, their, their, if I'm not wrong, their whole forward line uh, is a local yes. forward line. So I think that, that, that is good for Singapore football. And of course, um, with Noali as their coach, he's also a young coach. So I think that um, he also brings a lot of passion to the game and a lot of uh, uh, discipline to the game. So it, I think might, maybe the red cards might be a little bit too much passion on his part. But I think that um, sometimes you need, you need this in the game. So it was just, I think it was just unfortunate that they got that red card. Yeah, it was nice to see Zico Strua back on the football pitch once again, going through injury hell uh, in the past couple of months. All right, final game of the weekend was at Jurong West Stadium, and it was always going to be an uphill battle for the young Lions who were missing up to seven players due to national service commitments as they entertained Alberex Nigata. Action today on this beautiful Sunday afternoon between Young Lions and Alberex Niigata FC Singapore. Doi looks for the run of Fairo Hassan who will get a cross in. It's a decent one. Tanaguchi! And just like that, Alberex Niigata go 1 0 up. And it's Ryoya Taniguchi with his third goal of the season. Nagasawa. Hashioka can get another cross in. An opportunity for Nishiguchi. What a strike that is. Into the top corner. And Alberex Nigata go 2-0 up. An almost carbon copy of the first goal. Going all the way here, Shahib. Kairi Nadim. Offside flag is up. He was celebrating the goal. Oh, well. Very, very tight. Second ball still alive for Alberex Nigata. And Tomoyuki Doi! Good save. Shafiq Zaini still with Doi. And they will go up for a corner to Albrex Nigata. Still with Nagasawa. Strike comes in. And what a strike that is! 3 0 to Albrex Nigata. Oh, he came in from the left. No one closing him down until Jacob Mala came out. Isuzuka. Well, on the attack straight away to go here. Tomoyuki Doi! Finally gets his goal that he has been craving. Shot too hot to handle. Past the hands. Oh no, Shafiq Zaini. And all eyes on the referee, Jeherman Zaiton. And he blows the final whistle in this AIA Singapore Premier League encounter here at the Jurong West Stadium. A comprehensive victory for Alberex Negata. A result that will bring them up to second in the table behind Tampanese Rovers. Yeah, we don't want to be too critical over the young Lions who are, in essence, a developmental squad. Some bright sparks were Noshafik Zaini in goal and Jacob Mala, I thought, did a decent job um, at centre-back. But looking at the four goals, all could have been prevented. Fidel's. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's just inexperience, Duncan. So, uh, on the positive side, I think these boys now, uh, they... They get regular playing time, so you just have to pick the pick up from where they left off and look focus on the positives. It's already a young squad, but this is a younger generation that's coming up with the young Lions, Emmerich, and, and you've been part of the young Lions as well. What are the expectations being part of the young Lions squad? Because you're not expected to win the league, but are you just expected to improve month on month, year on year? I mean, um, having been with the young Lions, I mean. The Young Lions squad that I've been part of uh, were much more experienced compared to this Young Lions squad. So I think when, we, when I was in the squad at that time, I think we were, we were expected to at least give up, give a fight, you know. So we, we don't, of course, we don't expect to win every game or to win the league, like you said. So I think that um, the, our main objective is playing time and, of course, to make sure that we are of that level, to prove ourselves that we can make it at this level. So I think what uh, these Young Lions boys have to do now is like what Fidel said also um, just have to pick themselves up have to just get more playing time and of course to prove that they, they deserve their spot there Do you feel sorry for, for Nasri because this part and parcel of being a, a coach of, mm. of the Young Lions having players needing to go for a national yeah. service at some point during the season up to seven players missing <laughs> Ilhan Fandi was part of the squad and he's still scored the only goal for Young Lions this season they only named five substitutes two of which were goalkeepers, they called on the three outfield players. So, you know, th these are things that you need to adapt to as part of the, of the young Lions. I think I sympathise him definitely as a fellow coach. You always want your best players to be playing, to be available. 
and for him to only have uh, 15 or 16 available players, including two substitute goalkeepers, it must be very, very difficult for him. But I think for Young Lions, um, this issue has been bugging them for many years, so I'm pretty sure they'll find a solution for it. Alprax Negata, on the other hand, do look good. Top scorers in the league, 12 goals for the season so far. That front three of Nishiguchi, of Doi, Nagasawa also playing a part. Nice to see Firos Hassan back in action as well. What do you make of them going forward? I mean, over the years, defensively, they've always been good. But I think recent, in recent years, I think they've really improved their attacking play. So you can see in, in most of their plays and goals that they have a very fluid attacking uh, attacking style now. So it's, it's nice to see and also of course it's, it's probably based on what they've worked on in the, in the training ground. So of course, it's like you said, it's nice to see Firos back. So I, I think Firos offers a lot to the side. Um, he's a very experienced player and he has uh, the ability to be able to give all the balls and of course all the link-up play. So I think he'll definitely improve this every side. All right, so let's have a look at the results from the previous weekend. A big victory for Haogang United, of course, away to Tempest Rovers at our Tampanese Hub. Victory away as well on the Saturday for Ballis de Calza, who came away with the important three points against Tanjung Paga United. On Sunday, Lion City Sailors doing the business, clicking perhaps for the first time this season, a 4-0 victory over Geelang International. And for the Young Lions, it is a long, long, tough road ahead. They were defeated by four goals to nil at home against the White Swans, Alberex Nigata. So... Let's have a look at how it looks for the standings. And Tampanese Rovers, they still lead the way despite that defeat to Haugang United. Albrecht Nigata in second place with that goal difference of eight. They, of course, have scored the 12 goals. Ballestia in third position. But if you're Haugang United, if you're Geelang International, if you're Lion City Sailors, you do feel that you can put the pressure on the top of the table and perhaps if not qualify for the AFC Champions League by winning the league at least get an AFC Cup slot. Brunei DPMM, we have not mentioned them. As of recording, we still do not know the status of their participation in the league. And Tanjung Paga United and Young Lions prop up the rest of the table. So interestingly enough, because we have Haogang United representation on the set and because we do not know the future of Brunei DPMM as of the time of recording. Let's have a look at the fixtures for this upcoming week. And we're going with Brunei DPMM, still part of the league. And that is mouth-watering if it does happen on Sunday. Haogang United up against Brunei DPMM. And the other standout fixture, Albrecht Nigata, second position up against Lion City Sailors. Gila International will hope to bounce back from defeat as they take on Ballester Kals at our Tampani Sub. And the Young Lions and Tanjung Paga United, they might fancy their chances, Young Lions, up against Tanjung Paga, of getting their first points of the season. How do you, how do you prepare for the week, Fidaus? We, we do not know whether it will be up against Brunei DPMM or if the fixtures will be changed if we do get an update on the status of Brunei's so, participation in the league. At the moment now, we just prepare according to what we have. Uh, so if the fixtures says that we have to play with, uh, Brunei DPMM this weekend, so we will prepare accordingly. Uh, so until it changes, then we will do what we can for now. But I mean, the atmosphere in the squad must be at an absolute high right now after that, that victory. I mean, how has the training sessions been since that victory? Yeah, of course. Uh, boys are very happy. I mean, it's, it's a bittersweet moment actually because we had a couple of injuries now. So we're just waiting the the, the results of uh, Sahil Suhaimi and Anumantan. So, but otherwise, I think in general, the boys are very happy with the results. So it's time now to build the momentum to get a run of uh, winning matches and hopefully we'll see where we are. Emerick, looking forward to uh, getting back on the pitch. When can we expect you to be back on the pitch? Um, of course, I'm looking forward. So I, I mean, I'm waiting a long time to come back to Aogang. So of course, um, it would be great for me to, to make an appearance in Aogang Colours again. So of course, that would be up to the technical staff. I'm, al I'm always be ready trying to get back to my 100%. Of course, giving the best for the team and the club. So yeah, so and just any time. Well, we may not know who Haogang United may face next weekend, but we know for sure that they will be participating in the rest of the league and we are looking forward to seeing Emerick on the pitch and Fidel's down by the sidelines. Thank you guys for being on the show, on the SPL show, and we'll see you on the grounds. And we will see you on the screens. Hopefully, you can enjoy more SPL action this weekend on this particular platform. And we will see you for the next episode of the SPL show.